Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be taking a look at what would happen if the Ottomans didn't exist in 1444. Before we begin, consider leaving a like and subscribing if you enjoy this video. Only 10% of you are subscribed, so it would really mean a lot. Let's get started. Now as you can see here, it's 11th November 1444 and the Ottomans do not exist. They don't have even one single province. So here's what I did to make that happen and I'll explain the border decisions. Of course, I gave back all of Byzantium's cores. Now on Epirus, both Epirus and Byzantium have a core, but I clicked return province and it went to Byzantium. Both Bulgaria and Serbia have cores on Ohrid and Skopje, but since the culture is Serbian, I gave them to Serbia. As you can see, Bulgaria is right here, and both Bulgaria and Byzantium have cores on Burgas, but since the culture is Bulgarian, I did give it to Bulgaria. We can see all the Turkish Beyliks released right here. Of course, Karaman, Ramazan, Dolkadir, and Chandar are already in the game, but here we can see Mentese, which has cores on these two provinces right here, as well as Aiden, which has cores on these two provinces. Karaman did gain three provinces, which they had cores on from the Ottomans so this province right here as well as these two right here and we can see Germion right here now they only have cores on these three provinces and we can also see Saruhan right here which only have a core on this province so these five provinces right here these three and these two nobody had cores on them except for the Ottomans so I gave three to Saruhan and I gave two to Germion you know to balance them out and make them about as equally as strong as I can make them so we have lots of interesting situations to look forward to. Of course, Byzantium does have cores on two nations already. They start with a subject in Athens. Bulgaria has cores on two provinces over in Serbia, so that should be interesting. We should be seeing a conflict there. And all of these nations are actually pretty decently strong, and it definitely should make for some interesting wars once we unpause. Of course, Byzantium has a very strong mission tree. Serbia has a great mission tree as well, so they should be getting claims on a lot of nations over here. And we might even see interventions from the Italian nations like from Genoa or Venice and of course the Mamluks which are now the main power in this region as well as AQ and QQ they might expand here. So it's been another couple of years and we do have our first war in the region so Crimea declared on Bulgaria and as you can remember Serbia was allied to Bulgaria but they did not honor the call to arms so Bulgaria is alone against Crimea as you can see they're at war with Crimea and Byzantium is also a rival of theirs and as you know they do have cores and claims on Bulgaria so we have to wait and see if Byzantium will declare on them as well or maybe even Hungary but they don't seem to have any claims on them so let's see what happens so as the war between Crimea and Bulgaria was going on Byzantium decided to jump in on the action and they declared war on Bulgaria themselves. And as you can see, they took a huge chunk from Bulgaria. So they basically took back their core in Burgas and they also took all of their claims, which they had. Well, maybe they didn't have a claim on this province, but they took their core and five more provinces. So Bulgaria is down to three provinces. Obviously, because Byzantium managed to take these provinces, Crimea couldn't get anything from Bulgaria. And now Bulgaria is down to three provinces and no allies. Hungary also apparently got into a war with Poland, where Poland made them give back this Serbian core to Serbia. Of course, it is disconnected and they still don't have Belgrade. And Poland also fed these three Wallachian provinces to Moldavia and made Hungary release Wallachia once again. Wallachia doesn't have any allies, so we may see a small war between Bulgaria and Wallachia. Aside from that, no other changes have been going on. Albania is in a big war though, together with Savoy and Ferrara versus Venice, Bohemia and their vassals, and some other Italian states. So Albania isn't guaranteed by Venice anymore since they are in a war against them, but they are allied to Hungary, so we may see someone declaring on them. Aside from that, the Turkish Beyliks haven't been doing anything. I guess they're sort of alliance locked right now where no one nation is stronger than any other ones, so nobody actually wants to declare war. And the Mamluks haven't been expanding north either. And we're back, and there was just another huge war. So it was Byzantium versus Serbia, and Byzantium took out a huge chunk out of Serbia, almost all of it. As we can see, they took these two provinces, which are part of the Macedonia state. They took Kosovo with the gold mine, of course, as we can see. They also took their capital and these four provinces. So now Serbia is down to three provinces, and funnily enough, they're all separated. Bosnia also managed to annex Herzegovina. Bohemia took a huge chunk out of Hungary, so Hungary is very weak now they're only allied to 
Albania and Austria is at war with Venice and they're winning. The Turkish Beyliks also got into some wars finally so Saruhan managed to defeat Kirmian in a war and took three provinces from them and now they're fighting some peasants and Kerman is in a war with Mentese, Dolkadir and Ramazan and they have AQ helping them. So this is the war, these are the belligerents and I expect Kerman to win this war and honestly maybe all three of these countries will be full annexed and divided up between Kerman and AQ. Eretna hasn't done anything yet and neither has Aydin but Byzantium continues their domination. I'm assuming they're making some spy networks right as we speak and they do have a claim on Venice so if they feel that Venice is weak enough and they seem to be they don't have any allies and they're in a war with Austria and a bunch of other nations Byzantium might be declaring on them or they might be cleaning up around here and declaring on Serbia, Bulgaria, possibly even Bosnia since they don't have any allies and maybe even Albania and I wonder if they'll start moving into Anatolia at some point as we all know the AI isn't too good with naval invasions and crossing straits and such so we'll have to wait and see. So it's been a few more years and as we can see Kerman did full annex Mendesa down here and they did also take one province from Dulkadir here and AQ also took one province from them so now they're down to two provinces and Byzantium finally declared their reconquest war against Epirus so now they're at war with both Epirus and Naples and we can see that they already have landed an army in Italy I don't know how they will fare against Naples' 12k while they're only 10k right here but they should be moving more troops soon they are on the same tech now Castile did get their union over Aragon and they have Navarra of course and they did just declare their unification war with Portugal now as you all know this is the enforced union CB Spain gets from their missions but they did declare in Portugal and of course they're gonna get it now me personally I've only seen Castile do this maybe once or twice declaring the unification war against Portugal from their missions so this is very rare maybe it will happen more in 1.31 since we are in 1.31 as you can see by the monument here so we should expect a very strong Spain in this game and France is doing really well too they've taken almost everything from England Bohemia and Poland are crushing Hungary and Croatia is independent Muscovy is doing pretty good and so is Uzbek and Oirat Oirat are in a war against Ming which Ming declared and uh, the situation in India and Southeast Asia looks pretty normal Portugal already have gone for exploration and expansion ideas which means they will colonize for Castile and Byzantium has taken trade ideas for their first idea group a strange pick I have to say so it seems like Byzantium and Karaman will emerge as the dominant powers in the Balkans and Anatolia respectively. Karaman has taken religious ideas, Sarahan is also pretty big, they have diplomatic ideas and Albania managed to take over their entire state from Venice obviously and Albania have taken economic ideas and Bulgaria also. So none of these nations so far have taken any military ideas. Eretna actually has, they have defensive ideas. So yeah we'll have to wait and see how this goes. I think that there is a chance Poland actually might declare on Byzantium. Now that they're in a war against Epirus and Naples so we'll have to wait and see. Now it's the 1490s and Brandenburg just declared coalition war against Poland so Poland just took over two provinces from Bulgaria and apparently that was enough to trigger a coalition as we can see Hungary, Riga, Bohemia, Brandenburg and Wolgast are in a coalition against Poland and Brandenburg declared the war and this is how the two sides look. Right now Poland is losing by 48% so we will see some shenanigans happen here and Brandenburg might force Poland Poland to release some nations or give back some chorus. Aside from that, Byzantium has allied Austria and they have taken innovative ideas for their second idea group. And Castile did manage to enforce their union over Portugal and as you can see Portugal are loyal, so is Aragon and they are allied to England. So we'll definitely see a very strong Spain this run. And we're back after some time has passed. Byzantium did almost fully annex Albania, they're down to one province now and we can see that the Turkish Beyliks are finally in a war again with Eretna being taken over by Chandar. So they're in a war against Eretna and Crimea versus Chandar and Saruhan. Hungary did get beat up even more by Bohemia but then Bohemia themselves got beaten up by Austria. In that previous coalition war between Brandenburg and Poland they did make Poland release Nitra here. As you can see they're down to one province because Poland did reconquer it and they did release one more province from Bulgaria which is now. Serbia is now down to these two provinces and Austria 
Austria has expanded by quite a bit. Denmark did integrate Norway. The Mamluks are being awfully quiet this game. They didn't take almost anything. I expected them to expand into Anatolia by now. The Timurids are almost non-existent. And yes, Forest is yellow in 1.31. Ming exploded real hard. And England is colonizing over here as well as Portugal and Spain over here. Still no wars between the Balkan nations. Well, it's pretty much only Byzantium now. And the Turkish Balix. Byzantium does have claims on them. So it does have claims on the western portion of Anatolia here. And they don't have claims on Byzantium. The Protestant Reformation also spawned. And we can see there are two centers of Reformation right here. And one right here. And three reformed centers of Reformation. With one being right here. And two more being right here. Byzantium is guaranteeing Hungary. So that could get them into a war against Poland. Or Austria or Bohemia. We'll have to wait and see. The HRE is still gaining Imperial authority. And Austria has already passed two reforms. I don't think they will get to pass the third one though. So it's been quite some time since we last checked in. As you can see it's in the 1550s and Castile has already formed Spain. England has already formed Great Britain. Prussia is formed. As you can see Brandenburg is still here. Prussia was actually formed by Danzig this time. Austria has expanded quite a lot in this area. Spain are in a war with Naples in the second Spanish Neapolitan unification war. So they did have a previous war against Naples in which they failed to make them their vassal. I think they are going to succeed this time though and they have started integrating Portugal now of course as a player you wouldn't integrate Portugal this early but Spain are doing it and Byzantium is in a war against Saruhan so they've already started taking over the Turkish Balix as you can see they already have a foothold here in Sukla and they're in a war against Saruhan which is this nation in the green Eretna which is this tiny little yellow nation over here is in Kaifa Chandar and Ramazan so Chandar seems to be so Chandar seems to be one of the bigger regional powers here now along with Karaman they pretty much seem to be on equal footing. Karaman is allied to Chandar and Tunis and Byzantium does seem to be winning this war. They're already at 23% war score and they're about to take this fort here. They've already taken their capital and this is how that war map mode looks like. So Byzantium should be winning this war and they will finally start expanding into Anatolia. They already have actually. So will we see Byzantium achieve their borders which you need for the Basilius achievement? Let's wait and see. The Protestant Reformation is going pretty strong as you can see reformed is pretty well represented here in Bavaria as well as Protestant in North Germany as well as some bits here England or should I say Great Britain have become Anglican and they are already pretty successful with colonization establishing colonies in Colombia and Brazil as well as Spain having some here and Portugal Inca have formed and the North American natives are looking pretty good so Algonquin seems to be the biggest native nation having land all over here Great Britain and Portugal and Castile are establishing colonies as well as Friesland. Elsewhere in the world everything seems to be going as usual. Brandenburg is in a war against Prussia in the Brandenburgian conquest of Danzig. Now because they both exist I think there should be an event coming along here pretty soon which gives Brandenburg a PU over Prussia and then basically they will merge into Prussia. So let's see if that happens. Let's see if Brandenburg actually destroys Prussia and then becomes Prussia themselves. Poland seem to be chilling out not doing a lot right now and of course Spain is the number one great power followed by Great Britain who have had their flag fixed in the 1.31 update all by Poland, France, Muscovy, the Mamluks, Austria and Ming. Byzantium which is our main star of the show have taken quality ideas for their third idea group. So it has been some time since we last checked in and some things have changed. So Byzantium did reconquer all of Serbia again. Well, almost all of Serbia. They ha still have one province here. And Poland lost a war against Austria and Austria made them release Bulgaria. So Bulgaria is back here. It remains to be seen whether Byzantium will go for it again. Karakalunul is expanding over here and these two Turkish Beyliks seem to be alliance locked and unable to declare against each other. Byzantium doesn't have any strong allies. They only have Circassia as their ally. But at least Poland shouldn't be declaring on them anytime soon. Russia did form and they did start growing. And they've started conquering into some of the hordes over here. As well as Finland and the Baltics. And Spain and Great Britain are colonizing. No religious leagues yet. 
and the religious situation looks like this so we'll come back in a few years and check in again so around 25 30 years have passed and a lot has changed honestly so byzantium fully annexed bulgaria right after poland released them in that war and also later they took some land from poland so what seems to have happened here since lithuania is independent and has taken a big chunk out of poland it seems that lithuania got their independence supported from denmark and brandenburg probably and maybe even byzantium and then declared an independence war against poland which they won as you can see and as a result from that byzantium have gotten significantly stronger even taking out bits and pieces from chandor here they still haven't gotten into a war with caraman i don't think and they've taken a province from bosnia too i think spain is still doing really good they have a ton of colonies as you can see here they have around nine colonies so this is one this is another one this is another one they have a bunch of north american colonies they've started colonizing south africa as well as some provinces here and here nothing in australia yet though japan has formed and buff Mondays is doing really really good as you can see they have almost all of south india forest is still yellow unfortunately and russia hasn't been doing too much to be honest they haven't been fighting any hordes they haven't been fighting sweden and denmark or lithuania and brandenburg still hasn't formed russia because obviously prussia still exists as a two province minor and they're not even protestant speaking of protestant the religious leagues have formed with holland being the leader of the protestant league and of course austria the emperor leading the catholic league so some strong nations on the catholic side include austria and denmark which are big nations of course brandenburg is pretty strong we also have burgundy here which is a pretty strong nation lithuania as you just saw is pretty big great britain of course a very powerful nation so those are the strongest ones on the catholic side and on this side we also have some decently strong nations i think bohemia can be considered pretty strong russia is a very big nation on this side as well as spain the number one great power in the world and poland can be considered also moderate really strong i think that the leagues are pretty balanced out to be honest the fact that spain and russia are on the protestant side leads me to believe that the protestant side might come out on top although i don't think any side will be able to enforce their faith to be the official faith of the hre and i think that if a war does happen it'll just end in the peace of westphalia so next time we're gonna come back in around 50 to 60 years and see how byzantium and the rest of the previously ottoman territories have progressed as well as the rest of europe and the world and see how the great powers are doing but byzantium is number eighth now on the great powers and another surprise here is bahmanis and ayutthaya the ai so far doesn't seem to be upgrading or building monuments hagia sophia is still at level three at least here and if we can go and take a look at a wealthier nation like spain alhambra is still only at level one and great britain have of course moved stonehenge to london so it's been a few decades now as you can see it's the 1680s and let's take a look at everything that has changed so Austria have managed to consolidate their lands even more here taking some land from Hungary and Nitra is back so Hungary is almost non-existent they're down to three provinces over here and Austria is pretty big as you can see Switzerland has grown a bit too and Byzantium has taken a chunk out of Chandar and the Mamluks have also expanded a bit in this direction finally the new world is almost fully colonized as you can see in South America Spain is dominating as well as some British colonies over here and in the north Spain is dominating as well. Denmark managed to form Scandinavia. Brandenburg doesn't seem to be any closer to forming Prussia. Well, a strong Prussia, since Prussia does already exist, so they're not even Protestant. Of course, we are in the age of absolutism. And yeah, that's pretty much what has been going on, and we'll come back in a few more years and see how everyone is doing. So after this point, my game started crashing too often, and I had a really hard time loading back the saves due to the uncolonized provinces bug. So sometimes I could load them in, sometimes I couldn't. Thankfully, I could load up the save so I can do this outro. So that's why I'm gonna stop this run right here, and we're gonna take a look at everything that happened at least until January 1st, 1690, which is still a, quite a long time. So we can see here that caraman has grown but not by too much and we can see here that byzantium is the dominant power in the area of the previous ottoman territories which was sort of expected to be honest i did expect byzantium and caraman to be the dominant powers since they were the largest at the start of the game caraman didn't build up their monument and neither did byzantium actually they did just start so they are upgrading to tier 3 in the rest of europe austria is obviously dominating and as we know spain is very powerful as well as great britain russia is growing pretty strong they are currently 
currently in a war with Uzbek. Bahmanis is dominating India and Ayutthaya is dominating Southeast Asia. As you can see, Britain has started to colonize here too. And Australia seems to be split between Britain and Spain. And that's pretty much the situation in the world and in Europe and specifically in the Balkans and Anatolia. To answer the question, what would happen if the Ottomans didn't exist in 1444? Obviously, the two biggest states, Byzantium and Karaman, would be the dominant powers. I did expect the Mamluks to do quite a bit more, especially expanding into Anatolia, but I guess they didn't this game. Byzantium did take some pretty mediocre ideas. They even took maritime ideas, as you can see. So maybe if they focused more on military, they could have expanded more. But I, honestly, I do think it was a problem for them going in this direction and in this direction. So they pretty much expanded into all the smaller states where they could. And that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know in the comments what is the next scenario you would like to see me recreate. Maybe what if the HRE was united? in 1444? What if Great Britain existed in 1444? What if the Commonwealth was united in 1444? Or maybe even what if Prussia existed in 1444? Leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe. Only 10% of you are subscribed, so it would really mean a lot. And I've also launched channel memberships, so if you want to support the channel with more than just subscribing, you can check out the join button down below and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.